Hey guys, it's Thomas here. So, after finally two years of waiting, we are going to the Montreal Audio Show. Woohoo! Now, goodness, man, it's been that long, eh? Now, today, you know, instead of just going randomly to each room and filming, whatever, my plan of attack is first, well, I'll go check out PS Audio Room. They have that new speaker. And, you know, we all follow Paul, right? So, Definitely very excited to check that out. Now, for those of you who just want to skip to me talking about the speaker, just take a look at the timestamp somewhere here, okay? Um, I told Mr. Vintage, Mr. Kanta, my audio buddies, to help me choose a few rooms to talk about. I don't want to go like talk about every single room. Only things that are quite interesting. Not necessarily the best sounding room, but interesting. And um, there'll be no sound demo because it'll demonetize my video. Maybe I'll put that part for my Patreon or something. Um, but I'll try to talk over the, 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 the video so that, you know, you get some idea of what's happening. Now, one thing I will not do, I will not say anything. I will omit the negative parts. For example, if the speaker doesn't image, well, whatever. You know, maybe whoever set it up forgot to eat breakfast and towed it in properly so there's no you get what I'm saying. If you speak to people behind the scene, people who actually spend time setting up these audio show, it's really not that easy. So I'm going to cut them all a bit of slack. All right. Uh, I think that's about it then. All right. So let's go. So the first thing I noticed arriving at the audio show was the long lineup. I went on Friday and Saturday and was told Saturday was the busiest day. Now I got lucky and got a press pass. So I was able to stay after hours when I actually got some private additions. Now, without wasting time, let's start with the room that had a pair of open baffle speakers. I've heard so many people telling me about open baffle is the way to go, so I was really excited. I spent over 30 minutes there because the exhibitor was super, super nice to me, and he had no idea I had a YouTube channel, but still gave me VIP service. We were A-B testing amps and speakers. You see, there, there are two different speakers in the room and two different power amps. The first song we played on the open baffle speaker, my audio buddy, Mr. Kanta, was like, eh, it sounds okay, but the bass is weak. It's not dynamic. So I asked the guy to play something to show me how dynamic these open baffles can be. So he put on this track from Ejel. I'm sorry if, if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Mr. Kanta and I had a come-to-Jesus moment. Holy cow! The bass was not only strong, but there's a certain flexibility where you don't hear with boxy speakers. That is why I always say you never judge a speaker at an audio show. Play the wrong song, and you think the speakers are broken. There was this openness that was very unique to open baffle. So next, we tried these speakers from France, and yes, they're, they look a, little, a bit similar to BMW. Now, if you look at the top of the speaker, look at how thick the cabinet is. Now, when we first start playing these speakers, yes, the bass was really strong too, but not as fun as the open baffle. Still impressive. Now, if I stop here, I will walk out that room saying, yeah, those speakers were good. But once again, I want to stress why you never judge a speaker at an audio show. The exhibitor said, you want to see what these speakers can really do? Give me five minutes and I will change it to the monoblocks. So instead of using the tube amp. He promised me the solid state power amp will bring it to the next level. Between you and me, I doubted him. However, I was wrong. With the solid state amp, everyone, I mean everyone in the room, jar dropped. The bass was just incredibly dynamic. If someone had a cardiac arrest in that room, you don't need a defibrillator to restart their heart. These speakers will pound on the chest so hard that it will bring them back from the dead. To the exhibitor, whoever you guys are, a big thank you for entertaining me. The moral of the story, you can't just walk into a room, listen to whatever is playing and decide if the speakers are good or not. So next, let's talk about the PS Audio Room. Now, for those of you who follow Paul, I'm sure all of you 
are really curious about the $29,000 USD Aspen FR30. Now, I like the modern design look and the finishing is beautiful. What I find nice is you can adjust the treble with a knob at the back and there is this backfiring tweeter too. The speaker has a smooth top end, rich mid-range, and the bass is OMG level. They probably put a mini nuclear reactor inside. It sounded effortless, and I can't stress this enough. A lot of speakers, when you push the volume, kind of run out of steam. These speakers is like driving a V12, really strong. You know you're listening to a speaker that has the ability to create a big soundstage and scale. My audio buddy, Mr. Vintage, was particularly impressed with the rich mid-range and bass. Now, this is the kind of speaker you can listen to for a long time because the top end is on the smoother side. Now, I guess they probably went for that mu more musical route. Now, I know they can make the tweeter brighter because they changed it for a second in front of me and the difference was significant. You know, I get to hear a lot of tower speakers. Not many can create the scale and the weight of these speakers. You want a convincing orchestral performance? OMG, these will deliver. Next, a speaker I was looking forward to listening to was the Acoustic Energy AE520. Now, I reviewed the AE509, which is the smaller one. And at the time, in my head, I said, if only I had a bit more bass, it would be perfect and it would be like in the high-end realm. What is unique about these speakers is that it uses carbon fiber tweeter. Yes, tweeter, not woofer. So there's a certain smoothness to them and it sounds really different from a silk dome or metal tweeter. Where the AE520 differs from the AE509 that I review, it has three extra woofers and damn, it has that extra oomph that I wanted. And if my memory is good, I hear deeper bass notes comparing the 520 to the 509. But it's not only that. I think the extra weight with the bass creates a better balance. The electronics used to pair with these speakers have pretty good synergy. Mr. Vintage liked it as well as my other audio buddy, Russ. You see, I'm used to high-end speakers being full range. And because these speakers, these AE520 sound full range, they really have level up compared to the AE509, which I reviewed, and this did not disappoint me. No wonder when I saw Jeff, Jeff said, Thomas, you're not going to like them. You will love them. Moving along is the highlight for Mr. Vintage, the speaker that caught his attention enough that he wanted to go back to the room to listen again before leaving. This is the $14,000 Canadian, well, 14,000 Canadian dollars, Apertura Edena. I think they're from France. That is actually the first speaker I heard when I got to the show, and it is one of my favorite. I think the room really worked for these speakers, and the bass was dynamic, round, and controlled, despite there were no bass trap in the room. The speaker sounded really refined, but not fatiguing. The mid-range is thick and full body. The Higo combo was just spectacular because of how well it controlled the woofers. Easily the top three speakers I heard at the show. Mr. Vintage likes the fact that the speakers never get messy no matter how complicated the music becomes. Now keep in mind, I had VIP access and I was able to test whatever track I wanted. Two songs I tried were Wonder Woman and Star Wars Imperial March. I pushed it to the volume where my wife would kick me out of the house. I was like, oh man, this is how Star Wars was meant to be heard. You know, I tested so many speakers in my life, but rarely do I get to listen to something at concert level volume. It's great once in a while. At high volume, the bass was still able to maintain control and has good authority. Fantastic. In short, a refined speaker with great bass and full body mid-range. Now, they were supposed to send me the entry level 4,000-ish sensor speaker for review, but after I heard these, I don't know, man. Another room that blew me away was the $100,000 Focal Utopia Evo. I think this is the most, I mean, the most dynamic system at the show. They paired it with a 1,450-watt name NAT S1 amplifier. So it feels like you are getting into the ring with Mike Tyson. 
when listening to these speakers. The punch you get from these speakers is WTF level. Everyone there was blown away. Guys, 1450 watt, driving an ear bleeding SPL and the speakers don't distort even 0.1%. You gotta hear it to believe it, spectacular. But I think what was even more impressive is that when they switched to normal music, meaning nothing with crazy dynamic bass and just vocal, Mr. Vintage made a very interesting observation. He said, did you notice these speakers are impressive, not only at loud volume, but also at low volume. Fantastic, non-fatiguing presentation. Moving along is the AccuFace room. For those of you who don't know AccuFace, some call them the Japanese Macintosh. It is a prestigious brand in Asia. Now, at one point in my life, I dreamt of owning both a Macintosh and an AccuFace. I have a Macintosh now, but I'm still missing an AccuFace. So is this a bit special for me to go check out the AccuFace room? Now, I just need to win the lottery before I can afford them. Beautiful looking. They paired it with the PMC. I think these are the MB2. The PMC presentation reminds me of the PS audio setup. Big scale and powerful. And this was one of the systems that impressed Russ enough that he sent me a message about it. And I, my other audio buddy, uh, Jean-Francois. No wonder Sean from Zero Fidelity loved it enough to buy one for himself. Another system that was that is totally worth the time to check out were these omnidirectional speaker. You know, I'm sorry guys, I forgot the name. I'll put it in the description if I can find it. Now I got to hear it after the show with music I am familiar with. Now usually omnidirectional speakers don't have a solid center image from my experience. But this one is okay. Plenty of detail and the bass is really strong with the help of two rail subs. The soundstage is placed way behind the speakers with good depth. Now what was a bit surprising was I was able to hear sounds coming from places in the room that I did not expect. A different kind of experience. Now this reminds me of the Polk Audio Legend L800. I was really looking forward to these speakers because there is so much hype about them on the internet. Lucky. I got the room to myself when I was there and they played this track that was perfect for these speakers. It highlighted the strength of these speakers which is, which is a holographic soundstage that is almost like surround sound. Bass was dynamic and really fast. The soundstage was wide and as Mr. Vintage puts it, it is almost like surround sound. This is a warm sounding speaker with a lot of meat on the bone, very muscular. I actually went back three times because I found it different than other speakers there. Next, let me tell you a story. So, I bought Mr. Cantor to listen to the Gershwin Arvine Guard. Now, as you know, I have reviewed those speakers and they, they are quite impressive. Now, sadly, due to COVID, Mr. Cantor and Mr. Vintage never got a chance to listen to them at my place. So, that day, despite Mr. Cantor having heard quite a few high-end systems at the audio show already, before he stepped into the Gershman room, he was really surprised at how good the avant-garde sounded. It's the bass that caught his attention, articulate and detailed. It was sharp, but still easy to listen to. Now he thought it was one of the better sounding systems at the show. Then I told him, hey, you know what? Let's ask them to fire up the Gershman Posh? Posh? On the other side, he was like, uh, are you sure, man? I mean, they just set up the chairs for the avant-garde. I told him, it is worth it, even if I have to annoy them. 15 seconds after they fire up the Porsche, Mr. Cantor turned to me and said, Dude, man, this is another level, man. The best I've heard at the show today. By the way, for those who have heard these speakers, a tip for you. The best spot was actually not at the first row. Anyways, Loic, my other audio buddy, whom I met later... In the, in the room, the first thing he said, damn, these are impressive. Later in the car, he also repeated again, damn, those Gershman speakers like are really impressive. Now, of course, I enjoy seeing Mr. Kanta, Mr. Vintage, and Loic's face when I told them, wow, yeah, these speakers are $100,000. Their reaction is priceless. Yeah, you can buy with a MasterCard. And the feedback is exactly the same. No wonder they sounded this good. 
Now, Gershman did mention letting me try it at my place, but I don't know, man. I'll sleep in fear if I have a $100,000 speaker in my house. How do they sound? I can tell you they're pretty balanced. The bass is not over the top exaggerated, and the top end is refined and revealing. Now, at an audio show, people tend to look for over the top chest pounding dynamics with detail that will bleed your ears. It's fun for a while, but for someone like me, who is used to testing speakers all the time, I look for a more balanced presentation because it's more important for long-term listening at home. In short, one of the best sounds at the audio show. So next is Centre Hi-Fi. Dania, the owner, is actually a subscriber of mine, so I got VIP service again. Now after the show is over, I think that was a Friday, yeah, Friday, Jay Turgeon and I were hanging out in the Centre Hi-Fi room because they got some pretty high-end speakers. So we get to choose our music, we were able to move the chairs back and forth, we were able to move the speakers around. Man, just that experience alone has made my day. Now Centre Hi-Fi used to focus more on selling TV and home theater, but now they've changed and they do carry high-end audio. The T plus A front end used to drive these speakers is over 50,000. The Kef Blade Meta, Meta was of course impressive. Tight, powerful bass, big sound stage, clear top end, and fantastic speed. You know you're listening to a high-end speaker because of how dynamic and controlled it was. Now, having said that, it was more of an expectation because, come on guys, this is the Kef Blade Meta we're talking about. Now, what I was not expecting was the two Martin speakers on the side. It looks like a nice speaker, but the design is not as fancy as the Kef Blade, so I had only a certain expectations for them. However, when we power it up, the bass is bloody amazing. My first deduction was like, man, these are not budget speakers. You have crystal clear top end with bass that can pressurize a room bigger than the size of a badminton court. Guess what? They were like, I think $15,000 USD. I was like, no wonder. Now that was on a Friday. Now when I went back on Sunday with Mr. Kanta, they were demoing the Kef Blade Meta. Sure, Mr. Kanta found the, the Kef Blade 2 Meta ex amazing, but I wanted to surprise him. The people working in that room that day happened to be my subscribers, so I asked Oliver to change it to the Martin speakers just to see Mr. Kanta's reaction. Daniel fired up the track and I got more than what I wanted. Not only was Mr. Kanta blown away, but the crowd was also like, OMG, man. Mr. Kanta gave me that, you're kidding me, right? Look. Now, part of the fun for me going to an audio show is to see people's reaction when they're blown away. I don't know why. I, I get a kick out of it. All right, finally, let's finish the video with audio note. Vincent Belanger, who is a cellist, is the ambassador for audio note. Now, I met him once before, and he has arranged for me to review one of their products after the show. Vian Sun was so nice that he gave me a live performance. I rarely get to listen to live instruments, and I have to say, listening to live music is something really special and a privilege. Listening to the cello live stirred up lots of different kinds of emotions in me. I would love to attend more live performances going forward. In some sense, I wish I did not have to film and just listen to the performance. Anyways, the Audio Note A and E speakers are really dynamic. I have to say, EL34 used in that Cobra integrated amp is, you know, the EL34 is not what I consider a tube with a loss of dynamic and power. However, this Cobra integrated amp is very dynamic when paired with the A&E speakers. So for me, there are three possibilities. First, the speakers are 94 dB sensitive, so you don't need a lot of power to get dynamics. Second, the Cobra integrated amp probably has a mini warp core built in and delivers power that's beyond what I thought is possible. Third, perhaps because the room is big, they were able to push the volume so high that it gave me that wow experience. Whatever it is, I don't remember hearing a tube set up with EL34 with that much dynamics. Man, just when I thought I've heard everything, I got 
come across something that surprises me. Thank you, Vincent, for the experience. So, let me end the video now, as this is getting quite long. I do have a lot more other stories to tell, but perhaps another video in the future. For example, there was the new KOH Model 3. Love the room setup as well as the music selection. They knew what song to choose to bring out the full potential of the Model 3. Then there was also a chorus speaker that's made of granite. Here, let me show you a video of Jay in action. We had the room for ourselves, two after hours. This speaker is transparent and it can go down to 29 hertz. Man, he played a track with organs to show me how low it can go. Then there are these single driver speakers that have a very interesting bass. I told Russ who likes single driver speakers to go check them out. And true to my guess, he really liked them. I actually went to that room three times because it was really different and I enjoyed it. Man, what a great show. I got to hear many system, met some of you. I felt like a celebrity, especially when people asked me to take photos of me and you know, I got to hang out with my audio buddies at an audio show. Now, a big thank you to the organizers, Sarah and Lily from Motet Distribution for arranging a press pass. Thank you to all the exhibitors who were super duper accommodating and I hope we can do this in the near future. See you guys!